that, that's all right. What do we what do we want to we're talking about some we're talking about closing in the first phone call. Have you ever met anybody or any book or any seminar that talks about this kind of persuasive selling? Hi, this is intense selling. Why? Why do I why do I believe so? I, I was influenced by my mentor who did close real estate deals in one phone call. I mean commitments, micro commitments to full commitments. Why am I so big on this? Why do you think I'm I'm the only guy who says, yes, you can get a kiss on the first date. You can close in the first phone call, the first meeting. Why am I so why am I so big on micro commitments to full commitments? Don't want to waste time. Is- Elaborate. You go back and forth over and over again. You waste a lot of time. You waste a lot of time. What happens when we get the inevitable? I'll think about it. Send me information. Call me in two weeks. Let me look over the contract. I got to talk to my pet turtle. Um, what What happens when we get all that delay tactics? What is What happens to ninety nine percent of all salespeople when the prospect who's in control? The prospect uses these delay tactics, right? Oh, this, oh, Christian, this sounds so good. Oh, you're a great guy. I love the, oh, super, you know, send me that information. I'm going to look at it and uh, let's get together uh, after the holiday. Okay. Uh, I don't mean Labor Day. I mean Christmas. (laughs) I mean, isn't that what they do? Who's in control when they're doing that stuff? Damn it. Why are they doing it? It's it's like um it's a they're they're, uh, they're trying to buy time. They're um it's like a defense mechanism. I guess it's also like a negotiation tactic. Very good. Yeah, it buys them time. It gets the them prospect has a system. It's it's a system, and it's uh it's their agenda. It's about getting as much free information as possible or even an offer to then later on shop you around. It's a brilliant and system. It's a default it's system. Genius. It's, it's genius. They get, what do we do if we act subservient and submissive? We're the little dog begging at the table. What happens when we act like that in sales? And all salespeople, not all, but a lot of salespeople, oh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a mythology out there by a lot of guru trainers. This is where I'm going to get into deep guacamole now. And they say, give the prospect everything they want. And they're so nice, they'll give it back to you eventually. I don't believe in that. You know why? Because it never happened to me. The prospect takes and they keep taking. And if I don't have the guts to ask for something reasonable in return, I'm, do- I'm doomed to die broke. You can disagree with me, guys. Okay, this is subjective stuff. I'm just telling you that when I get a prospect on the phone or on Zoom or in person at a coffee shop, I go, what do we need? What do we need, Mr. Premj, to do business today? A, a big, um, what you're doing too is, is uh, sales can be a numbers game, right? And when you're giving everything away, eventually maybe you will have somebody uh, do a deal with you. But what you're doing, what, what we're doing here with the gut system also is, is playing against the numbers game and, and bettering the odds for ourselves. We're the casino or we can be the casino and have the odds in our favor. Give away free drinks, hide the clocks, have pretty people show, serving drinks all day long. And the mathematical formulations of all the games are in our favor. It's our house, but we don't use those things, do we? We, you know, it, they want you in a casino. Because it's those, uncomfortable. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. It's it, it's not uh, it's not our natural uh, way of being. You know, we were raised to, uh, you know, be polite or, you know, like not uh, obfuscate people or, or, or anything like that. And, and, and in reality, it's is that sales is dangerous and it's uncomfortable. Say you that again. Comfortable Say that again. Sales I is, love that. Sales is dangerous AF. Sales and, is so dangerous. And, uh, what happens? And you if, gotta, what happens if you kiss the you kiss the pretty girl? You go on a date and you kiss the girl at the wrong moment. At the your timing is off. 
uh, you just what's the what's the chance what's going to happen you're going to get slapped in the face you, you know sales is dangerous because it's the unknown this is the yep. it's unknown country it's unknowns but we can put some of the things the math in our favor you've got a problem you want a solution sir if i can present you with a solution that's timely that solves the problem and works with your budget and the authority that you have what would you say to me next Get those micro commitments all day long, right? Sir, if you found, sir, Brian, if you found a solution to that problem that met with your budget, you told me you can afford $2,500 a month. If I could find you a property that meets with that budget and serves your needs, you wouldn't be able to make a commitment today if you had that perfect property at that right price, would you, sir? Oh, it's a possibility. I don't know what that means, sir. Possibility. What is my wife? My wife once said it's a possibility she'd be pregnant. It's a yes or a no. Uh, well, you know, I'd have to chat with the wife and, you know, you know how that goes, you know, happy wife, happy life. Okay. So you're not really ready. Even if you had the perfect deal with the right price that you told me your budget was 2,500 and you're looking for an apartment building. And if we got the right property at the right price, it still wouldn't be something you could act on today. And I respect that, sir. That's all right. So really, when are we looking to, do, when are you looking to do, are we on a fishing expedition or are you looking to do this uh, next year or five years from now? Give me Ooh. some more, help me out here, sir. Well, I'm looking to move now. I just don't like being pressured. You know, like, what are you going to do, sir? It's business. It's all about pressure. Do you want me to tell you the truth or just give you a candy cane? I do like candy canes. <laughs> well, you're dressed like uh, one, so I figured. Off the rope, off the rope, you get that. That can go both ways on the listener. So, so you gotta be, you gotta be ready. To fire I, like, I, but, love, uh, I love pink. I just for the record, I love pink shirts. They're really cool. It's salmon. <laughs> okay, excuse me, salmon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What is that? I want I I will refer to I will refer to Felipe's shirt there. Felipe, show everybody your shirt there once more. <laughs> what does it say? Fuck your feeling. Oh, I love yes, that. Sir. I love that. Oh, here's the thing it's a there's it's too a many moment. too many too many woke people in the world so they need to they need to know it a little bit better well, woke whatever you want we're in business how do you how do you close a deal how do you make money why are we in business i say this all the time rick why are we in business bubby you make money now amen brother amen amen so, you know, what is what that? is that feeling when you make this money is the church today? of guts yeah when you make money today, when you get cash today, a commitment, a contract today, and you did it by your own hard work, ingenuity, and a little bit of daring, and you said some dangerous things about the customer's shirt, and you, and, and, but you still, you made a deal happen. You earned some quan. You, you know, you could put mac and cheese on the table tonight. How does that make you feel? It feels good, but how you overcome the trust factor of it? Like when they say build rapport and everything, how because you know, it happens with me all the time. I'm so glad when you when you say trust, sir. What do you mean? I mean, I know we've never met before, right? This is our first conversation, right. and you know, if I was in your shoes, I'd feel the same way. You know, a lot of people get scammed and taken advantage of, and everything. Good for you for bringing that up. I respect that. If I was in your position, I'd question it. What do you need from me? I want to do. I've made a decision. I want to do business with you today. What do you need from me so we could have a good, long-term, trusting relationship? We're brothers from different mothers. How do I earn that trust? Okay, makes sense. Go ahead. Like how you present it, you said. Oh, keep going. Keep well, going. well, yeah, this is the first time I'm seeing you. I've, I've been scammed before. But, yeah, my wife you know. said that on our honeymoon. You know, it's, it's you're right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you- I want to think what, about it, you know. You know what? I heard that. Oh, geez. Was I that loud? Oh, my. Oh, my God. Don't believe him. Don't believe him. Just don't believe him. So, that's, that's what, you true. know what, sir? We've all been scammed, taken advantage of. Um, you know, I don't I don't like to brag, but I, I'm related to a prince in Nigeria. You know, there's a castle with a gold diamond mine somewhere in my name. I know. I mean, that guy didn't lie, right? Everybody's had that email, right? 
Am I, am I the only one who had an email that I'm related to the, uh, the prince of Nigeria or something like that? They're getting more sophisticated now. Like they're there's like robocalls saying that, you know, like it's the IRS. It's crazy. It's oh, it's crazy, crazy, guys. It's more and more sophisticated. It's it's insane. Let's keep working off Rick, though. The trust issue is really big and closing in the first phone call. How do we overcome? This is not. And most sales guys, when they get that trust issue, they'll either get offended or they'll react uh, aggressively or defensively. What, okay, what I got to do is get a com micro commitment once again from Rick. Rick, what do you need from me in order for us to do business today? I don't know. Uh, Who would? Probably, yeah. Brian, what do you need from me today so we can do business today? I understand the trust well, issue. I want to earn your trust. Tell me what you need. And I'll 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 do whatever I need I, I can possibly do to earn that trust. But I want to know we can do business today. And if you don't like well, that, I'll I'll leave you alone. I'll get out of here. I'm busy anyway. Well, I I'd, I'd like to see proof of funds that you have the funds available. I'd, I'd okay. like to see that you've done this before and you know I've done can this I, a lot. Can my secretary Felipe write all these things down while we're talking? Sure. Okay, thank you. He's online here. He, he takes notes for me because everything you're saying is brilliant. This is great stuff. So I've got two things here. Felipe, what did he say again? He said proof of funds, references, and what else? Because I, I don't want to miss out on this pearls of wisdom. Please, please. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to know that, you know, um, <clears throat> people, you know, they. I, I, I want to talk to some people that, um, How many? <clears throat> well, we already did that. How many? Um, 10. 10? You sure? I give you, would you like 15, 20? Why not? Okay. I'll give you, if I give you those 15 people today, my secret sales force, my, my customers, in other words, would you like to speak to my customers? I would, yeah. Okay. And if I give you those today, I give you their emails, their phone numbers, uh, information, and you speak with them, what happens at 4.30? And they and they meet with your personal satisfaction. What happens at four thirty when we meet on Zoom? Well, I'm kind of busy today. I don't know if I'm going to be able to call all these people. You have to, sir. This is one of my. This is the only favor I'm going to ask you, sir. You brought up. I want to do a deal with you today. I'm going to ask you to bet to take care of that today. So by four thirty Friday afternoon, you and I can do a deal. And if you want to say no to all this, it's okay too. But I'm ready to do. I've made a decision. I'm ready to do business. <laughs> And you brought up the problem. I want to earn your trust. I'll give you 20 people to talk to. The only thing I'm going to ask you in return is that we make a commitment to 430 on Zoom and you tell me to get lost, I'm fired, or we can do a deal. Is that fair? Well, you know, you may have made a decision to do business, but I haven't made that decision yet. And I don't want to pressure it. You told me you needed trust. You told me you needed references. You told me you needed proof of funds. I'm what else can I give you? It sounds to me, sir, and tell me if I'm wrong, that you're not ready to do business today. Why do I feel that way? I'm not sure why you feel that way. Perhaps you should ask yourself. No, I, I, I'm asking you, sir, because you're the one who's bringing up all the obstacles and everything. Is it over? Let me ask you, sir, is it over? Are we done? Ooh. Uh, I'm not sure this, you know, Where I just need want? a little time. Now, sir, we don't have the time. Like I told you, I'm a busy guy. I love your property. I like you. I like your directness, but I don't have time to pussyfoot around. Well, that's your decision. I, I don't you're know right. What to tell you. You're right. It is. I have rights in this process, as you do too. You know what's so? Let's just say, for argument, let's just say it's over at this point. Is that fair? Sure, that's fine. Now that it's over, let me take off my Boom. sales. Boom. 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 That's that's the reset it. button right there, guys. That's the reset <laughs> button. <laughs> now that it's over, say, and then you go right back into selling again. You say, sir, I'm trying to do business with you. You got a property for sale. You want to buy a property. You want uh, 2,000 tons of used dental force, whatever. You want to buy a life insurance policy for $5 million. You, you, 
whatever, why aren't we? I think you're going to have regrets when we get off this phone call and you're going to be asking yourself today, tomorrow, the next day. I think you're going to be asking yourself, did I just, did I just get, get rid of the goose that laid the golden egg? Did I just lose the, one of the best offers, the best deals from a straightforward guy? Why do I feel that way? I think you're going to have regrets. Why do I feel that way? I don't believe in regrets, Claude. I don't either. What what can we do to what can we do to man to man? What can we do to make a deal happen today? Or otherwise I'll just go and leave you alone and wish you a wonderful weekend. Well, Claude, did you just assume my gender? I'm 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 confused, sir. Help me out. You said man to man. Did you just assume my gender? Well, you have a beard. Uh, you have a nice looking shirt. You have a nice, uh, uh, you have a deep voice. Um, am I, am I going, am I stepping out on a six inch ledge here? What am I doing wrong, sir? Are we in California? Surf, surf, it's, surf. I'm wearing a pink shirt. Surf, it's, surf, it's any consolation. I'm voting for Caitlyn Jenner for governor of California. <laughs> Let's do business. I, I think she, I think she has the balls to get the job done. <laughs> that's a good one. Oh. That's a good one. <laughs> Don't do off the role play. Do not do what I just did. Do not do that. <laughs> I, mean, I was really hard on you. <laughs> so. No, I love hard. No, I love real. I love real because uh, you give it to me. Here's the thing, though. If you know you're going to lose the sale anyway, do you think five minutes ago I knew this was a dead deal? You were yeah. putting up wall after wall after wall. You're not ready to do business or you don't like me or the price. Something's going on here. You don't have the authority. You don't have the money. You don't, something's on. When you know it's over, what does the smart gut salesperson do? Push. I mean, if you piss them off, it is what it is. You know? I love it's pissing. Be I love, when you're pissing them off, you're winning. You're yeah. also getting a lot of practice. What happens... If we go and get the you know what kicked out of us all day long, what happens on Monday morning? Oh, do you want to make all those phone calls again? Do you want to start this off? It's so important for us to feel good about ourselves. Why do, why do I stress this so often? You won't make calls if you don't. <clears throat> if, if you don't feel good, if you don't love what you're selling and you don't love talking to people, and you don't love studying sales and learning a system of persuasion, you're gonna fail. You're gonna go from guru to, this is what I did when I first got, can I take, here, let me drink some, uh, let me have uh, some truth serum here, okay? When I first got started in real estate, I read every book, I went to every guru, I bought all these packages. Do you think any of these people spoke to me the way I'm speaking to you guys today? No. All they gave me was uh, Felipe, help me out. What's that expression you always use? I love it. Um, we lost your audio. Now we lost it. It's we lost his audio. One How about now, guys? Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, it was unicorns and rainbows unicorns and a bunch and of rainbows. In a truckload of bullshit, guys. That's just the that's just what it is. They they give you uh, a lot of fluff, a lot of uh, a, you know mindset and a lot of hype, but no substance. You know, they give, absolutely. They give you no. all the the great gurus out there. Give you tons of motivation. If you notice in their speeches, it's ninety percent motivation and ten percent persuasion for the tools. And I know one thing about sales. My life changed because I, in the beginning, I wasted all this time on all this accumulation of information and motivation. And but when, it, but why are we in business to make money? What is the tools that we need to get the million dollar mindset to make money today? I'm just cutting to the core here. To the, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in waste. I don't believe in patience in business. There's something wrong with me. I have an extra chromosome or something like that. I don't care what Gary Vaynerchuk and all these other guys say. I think if you have a good product and you have a little bit of confidence and you have the right, you know the right words to use at the right time. Is there anything wrong with getting commitment today? No. 
No. Sometimes this, maybe it'll take to another meeting. It can happen. But at least you know there's a possibility uh, in the follow-up meeting because you're going to get micro commitments and you're going to get a little reciprocity. Okay. Rick, I Rick, I, I got to mute you, Rick, because we're getting feedback from your from your audio. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, reciprocity means, hey, Brian, Christian, I'm going to get you the paperwork. I'm going to get your proof of funds. I'm going to give you referrals. I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to set my cat on fire. No, don't set your cat on fire. Um, uh, I'm going to give you whatever you want. But can you do this one thing for me? Can I have a commitment? And that man to man thing, is that, not that, that I'm glad you brought that up because we're in a little hypersensitive little world here today. And we're not always talking to men. We're talking to women. We're talking to all kinds of uh, situations today. Okay, I'm very careful here, my guys. I'm in a danger, I'm in a danger zone right now. <laughs> but what the one thing is, um, are we in time? Can we make it emotion? Am I making it emotional? Okay. Am I am I nurturing you? Am I making it emotional enough to keep your attention and to get a commitment to get out or get some practice? That's so the, the the pushback too, Claude, with the conversation with Brian back and forth. Brian was starting to get frustrated. It seems like with you, mm -hmm. so you're bringing out emotion in that sense as well to keep him engaged. So it's kind of like it seems to me like it's a push and a pull, right? So you keep on pushing, and then you pull pull away once it looks like you're gonna lose the prospect and he's gonna hang up on you, and then you go back again. You, Christian, good point. You're gonna hear me apologize. In a lot of cases, I might do some what we call the guts moves on purpose. Sir, it sounds like it's over. Now that it's over, can I can I ask you another question? Or sir, it sounds like you're mad at me, you know? And it's not the first time I've done this. I tend to be very direct. I get I'm or a little outspoken. I get it from my mother's side of the family. What can I well tell me what I can say or do to make things right with us today? What, you know, what did I say that's wrong so I can apologize? I'll go back and fix it. You see, prospects, the sales guy is usually, who's usually the person who wimps out of the sales conversation? Sales guy. No guy. Sales guy. We're chickens. <laughs> well, sales guys. Who usually, well, I'm really busy right now. Call me at another time. No, can't do that, sir. I'm, you know, it's right now. I'm ready to make an offer right now. I don't have the time. Would you, you wouldn't want to sell your home and get a big fat check or in a contract right now, would you? <laughs> yeah. Nobody right. talks to them like that. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the beauty of this system. If you had it's a pattern interrupt. interrupt. And let me give you an analogy here. And listen, I'm not in, I'm not in sales for, e for my ego to be stroked all day long. I'm not in sales to attack people and to get into arguments or anything like that. I'm in sales for one reason, solve people's problems and make and put Mac and cheese, make money, make honest money on the thing. And I think we waste too much time on too many unlikely prospects. And then we do all this other stuff. And instead, what's the value of one good prospect? You get one good prospect in a day, maybe. Do you want to do you want to lose that prospect? You've got that opportunity. Why not go for it? What's the worst that could happen? You know, sales is dangerous. I like it's real dangerous. Why? If you study sales, we've all worked for other companies and everything. Have we ever noticed that who are the top people in a company? Like a like a one the one percenters I call them. Who are those unique individuals who make more money, ten times more money than than the average average sales guy in the company? Who are those guy guys and girls? Who are those people? They always seem to make more money than everyone else. What is it that they do different? They flex the uh, it gaff muscle. Explain that. The I don't give a f muscle. You know, like it's it, they put the they put themselves first, which is totally okay. You know, like they they're contrarians. You know, they're not. You know, if 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 they would do what everybody else is doing, they would be you know, bottom performers at the, at the, at the, to say the least. So, so 
So a, a, a one percenter is somebody that, you know, that gets the job done yeah. every single time. Uh, those are like the, you know, the Michael Jordans, the, the Ron James, like, but, but in, in sales, you know, like it's, that's the, the, it's, it's a strong personality. Sometimes, you know, like you may, you may not like them and you may not, you know, you may feel uncomfortable around them, but they get the job done. And that's what matters. You know, it's all about, you know, it's about going to the bank today. That's it. Do you mind, Felipe, do you mind a professional being direct, honest, and super assertive to you if you truly believe that what they're saying is in your best interest? Absolutely. I, I think about the analogy of, uh, you know, like a tax attorney or even a, a criminal attorney or, or, a, or, a, or, or your, you know, like your doctor when you go and get your annual checkup and, and he says like, hey, you know, you're severely overweight, you need to quit smoking and eating Doritos, you know, and, and, and midnight snacks. Because otherwise, you know, the, it's gonna get it's gonna get bad. I mean, yeah, they a great salesperson, a one percenter tells a prospect what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. Why? It, what what's because, the end, what's the end result when they're unconventional, they're direct. They're unbelievably honest. They're a little, abra slightly abrasive. Maybe they're saying things that no, their competition would never say. Why do they do this stuff? Because deep inside, they care. They care about solving the other person's problem. Once I know that I can solve your problem and I sell in an ethical way and, and I have a product that it's, you know, that it's good or serve as a product or, 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 a, or a solution to the problem, it's my responsibility to, to make you, you know, like to, to make you believe it is. And, and if, you know, if it's going to take to, you know, a little bit of shaking, so be it. Let me, but, uh, but let, we're, me bring a, let me go ahead. I'm sorry. Cut you off. Cause we're too scared. You know, like everybody, you know, deep inside we're, we're, we're a chicken shed. We're all worried <laughs> about like being politically correct. Oh my God. If I, if I talk to them this way, I'm going to lose the deal. I mean, here's, there's no deal yet, so you're not losing anything. Can you use scripts? I, let, let me change the subject. I got invited to uh, an, uh, another sales trainer. They send me an invitation, and he wants to talk about all his, his brilliant, uh, I think it's next week, it's all about his brilliant scripts. And my attitude on scripts is that it's not that they're bad or they can't help you or something like that. There's too many variables in sales. We're dealing with different people, different personalities. Uh, different attitudes, environments. Can you use a script, memorizing a script? Can, uh, can Or do you think you'd be a better, stronger, more successful salesperson if you practice spontaneity, um, speaking off the top of your head, that, that ability to think on your feet fast and adjust for every situation? That's a, that's a deep question because it's the... To script or not or not to script, not to you know. Script. I love that. <laughs> so I mean, you have no, but I mean, I, I've been reading about it for for a while because I mean, before I started working with Claude, I was like firm believer that you had to have a sales script, and I, you know, had a little bit of success in in sales doing that. But then it's an incomplete approach because, like, there's like again, it, it's not linear. It's not linear, you know, like sometimes the prospect is going to take you like on a, on a tangent and you got to be ready. And so more than a script is just having a, a process, a roadmap, um, understanding. And, and that's why, I mean, personally, I think that understanding the why behind what they're saying, it's more important than, than what, to, what to tell them. Uh, yeah. Sales is complicated, isn't it? We're talking about all these different psychological aspects, these actions we need to take, uh, when to qualify, when to set an agenda, pattern interrupts, redirections, being assertive at certain times, uh, all this. Uh, when did sales become so complicated? Or is it, it's always been like that, hasn't it? Isn't this the one percenters understand human nature, they understand what other people are thinking and feeling, the empathy, that I, I love to talk about empathy. Some, did you ever have a gut feeling that you know what they're thinking? You know, did you ever have a situation where you knew what they were going to say next? Have we all had that feeling? 
A absolutely. Yes. You, you know, and can we practice that? Don't you hear the same 10 questions from prospects and no matter what product or service you sell, don't you hear a certain repetitiveness? And can you practice that and adjust for it with the perfect answer while still maintaining your confidence and your, and your professionality within a conversation with someone? What do you want people to say before, when you get off the phone with them, Brian, Christian? It's professionally answer my questions. What else? Go deep. What do you want them to feel about you when you get when I they trust get them? Trust. 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 What else? What do you think they're going to say to their spouse, their significant other after they get off the phone? You're trying to sell them an insurance policy and there's 20 other agents they have appointments with. How are you going to become the one percenter and stand out against all that competition? And this goes for real estate, car sales, network market, I don't care what. How do you, in a competitive world, we're in a very competitive world. We have people with a lot of money for a lot of marketing and advertising and fancy offices and everything. How does one person who understands, who has empathy, how do they get that prospect to differentiate that you when they get off the phone in this super uber competitive world? What do we need to do? You understand what they need. You're not just trying to sell them something. Okay, but what else? I mean, we got to go deep here. How do you make them say, wow, I don't think I want to call those other 19 attorneys. I don't want to call those insurance agents, those realtors, those, you know what? I felt good about Christian just now. This guy he seemed like a pretty straight guy. He, there was no BS. He was really straight with me. There was something different about this guy or girl. How do you create that? How do you stand out so that prospect makes an instant emotional decision and says, Brian, you're my guy. I'll tell you right now, you throw in that beautiful salmon colored shirt and I think we can do a deal. I don't know, a bond? I mean, you make them feel that, you know, you get them and their problems and that also that you care Ooh, can that you be you care. if you show someone you care can you be very assertive to them sir yeah you, you can even be a douchebag and and that's okay <laughs> i love hey mr mr bosans can i tell you something and you promise you won't get mad at me promise sir because most people get mad at me and i don't want that but you probably I'm not so mad. sure but i will try okay okay because I, I like to tell you the truth you're making probably the biggest financial mistake of your life by what not taking but you told me you have a problem I have a product, a service that can solve this problem by August the 15th. That's in timely. It's a little above your budget. That's the only problem we have to overcome today. But can you imagine for a moment, we can solve this problem. We can sell your house. We can get you in a house. We can finance your house. We can get insurance for your house. And all these problems are gone today because you and I made a smart commitment. I've made a decision, sir. We're gonna solve this today. I'm here for you. You're part of my new extended family. Can we move forward or should I get lost? Oh, man. Now that you put it that way, uh, can you give me till six o'clock to make a decision? What's going to happen at six o'clock, sir? I, I really have to run this because this is a way more than I was expecting to, to, to invest okay. in an insurance policy. But so I... I'm uh, sir, can I be a little bit more honest than you promised you said? You haven't gotten mad at me yet. Thank you, sir. I'm scared for your family right now. You're exposed. You have a business, successful business. You have employees. You have debt. And God forbid you're, you're hit by a, uh, you know, a meteor or something like that. You're expo I'm scared for your family right now, sir. Let me do my job. I'm damn good at it. Let me write this thing up. Let me send it to you. And let you talk to your spouse. And at six o'clock, let's have another meeting. And you can tell me to get lost or you can tell me, thank you. Let's move forward. That's fair. I give you my word that at that time, I'll have a decision whether it's a yes or a no. I, I respect that, sir. Thank you. I'll see you at six. I'll get you the paperwork now. Now, you will be there at six sharp, right, sir? Because I got to move. I've got to change my daughter's birthday party to 730 because of this meeting. But that's how important it is to Ooh. me. Okay.
Yeah, no. Now that you put it that way, that let's do it. Six o'clock sharp you're part, on the dot. Sir, you're part of my new extended family. I take care of my family. Boom. <laughs> I and see. word of honor. That's how it sounds. We we say <laughs> shit like round this. Of and, and, Can I have and a round of applause for that? <laughs> I want the academy after that one. A little over the top, okay. <clears throat> And we're exaggerating slightly here, but sometimes that's what it sounds like. Okay, what am I trying to create in the mind of that person when they get off the phone? Holy shit, where did this guy come from, right? I mean, whoa, N nobody sounded like this guy. This guy has passion. He believes, he cares, or he's, he's nuts. I don't want to ever, you know. <laughs> that's the doctor analogy that you always talk about, right, Claude? Yeah, yeah. Do you want the doctor who says, look, Christian, I, Christian, you don't smoke, right? Before I really get in trouble. No, no I don't smoke. Okay. okay. Christian, you're smoking 10 packs a day. And you told me your daughter's going to have a baby soon. And you strike me as a good husband, a good father. And you're going to be one, the world's greatest grandfather. But if you keep smoking like this, you won't be, you won't be, a, you won't be around for that child. I'm ordering you to stop smoking. Are you mad at me? No, I'm not mad. It's just, it's, it's hard, Claude. It's, that's uh, right. It's hard. But do you see yourself walking your granddaughter down the aisle, maybe going to her graduation, maybe cheering her at soccer games. You get those big hugs from her all the time, grandpa and everything. Don't you want to be part of that? Isn't that what life's about? Yeah. I mean, I definitely want to see all of that. I've got a prescription. I'm sending it to you right now. It's going to be for a patch. It's going to help you overcome that. I've got a friend who's also a hypnotist. He's going to help you quit smoking, but bottom line is the decision is with you. Are you, re are you ready to enjoy life or to, or to end it prematurely? No, I, I want to enjoy life. I want to see my grandchildren grow up. Is that a commitment? Yeah. If, I mean, if that's what you think is going to help me. No, I don't think, sir. I know. Yeah, let's do that, Claude. What? Let's do that. Good man. Thank you. Boom. It doesn't matter. It's the same words. The sa it doesn't matter if I'm playing doctor, a lawyer, a realtor, a life insurance, a car salesman, use dental floss. It's the same. We sell emotionally. And then we go to the intellectual part. I could give you all the scientific studies and facts and surveys and all the other gobbledygook garbage. But what's the thing that's going to make somebody make a decision? Emotion. It's always emotion. I got to go, guys. I have uh, this time. This was a very good there. session, guys. Very, very good session. Did you enjoy this, guys? Was it okay? I did. Great meeting, everyone. I need some Thanks, accolades. Claude. I'm insecure today. <laughs> Everybody is, Claude. That's that's it. We're all, we're all like we're all insecure. Yeah. We're all insecure. I only act this way on the outside because in deep, deep inside, I'm a chicken shit. Yeah. That's we're why all. Felipe has that shirt on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's 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 a facade. <laughs> hey have guys, have a great weekend. Okay. I'll see you Saturday. Beer with Claude. Take care. Have a good one, guys. Have a good weekend, Bye -bye. guys. Good session. Thank you.